In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a very powerful wave shape or combinator effect patch. Wave shaping is used tremendously in electronic music. We hear it very much so in electro, in dubstep, in techno, in drum and bass. And its sonic effect can be described as adding a level of abrasion or animation to sounds. To me, it kind of sounds like the sound treated with wave shaper is jumping out of the mix at me, or even screaming. I might even go so far as to say that the synth even sounds like it might be going under a degree of sonic torture. Some of the very popular VST audio unit plugins that are out today have wave shaping or multiple wave shapers built into their structure and base their sound around it. In fact, Maelstrom and Thor both have a wave shaper in their signal path. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with wave shaping, wave shaping is a very powerful form of distortion synthesis. It works off of different shaping algorithms that process, bend, twist, and modify incoming sound. This is especially useful for bass and lead sounds. In hardware, some of the big modular systems of yesteryear have had wave shaper components in their path. So let's first listen to what the effect of the wave shaper would be on a simple sound. In this project file, I have Thor generating a simple sine wave out of the analog oscillator, as you can see right here. And I already have the wave shaper effect patch plugged in to the output of Thor. And I have a slew of real-time controls mapped to the combinator controls. So let's first listen to the sound unprocessed. Simple sine wave. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage the shaper and I'm going to start messing with some of the real-time controls on the front panel. So just to quickly AB where we started from, let's bypass the shaper. So as you can hear, it has a pretty dramatic effect on just a simple sine wave. And if we look closely at Thor, we can see that there is in fact a wave shaper in the signal path. However, only filter 1's output can go through the wave shaper. So if we wanted to process the entire synth patch through the wave shaper, we can't with the internal routings. Maelstrom works the same kind of way. So, being that Reason and Record are so flexible and modular by nature, we can actually build our own wave shaper effect patch. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to erase the devices inside this rack and I'm going to start with a blank combinator patch. I'm going to disable the auto routing by holding down the shift key on my keyboard and I'm going to create a combinator. And I'm going to continue to hold shift and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 6x2 line mixer and next while still continuing to hold shift I'm going to create a Maelstrom synthesizer. Now we can actually see in the Maelstrom that there is in fact a shaper and one thing to note about the shapers inside Maelstrom and inside Thor is, is that they are mono. So we want to create a stereo wave shaper effect patch here. So in order to do this, I'm going to need to create another instance of Maelstrom. So again, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to right click and I'm going to create another Maelstrom. I'm going to quickly rename these also so that I can keep track of what I'm doing. I'm going to call this one L for left and I'm going to call this one R for right. And I'm just going to make a couple of changes on the front panel of each of these Maelstroms. First thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the oscillator A on each one. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off filter A on both of them also. So we've set things up on the front panel here now with the devices and if I hit the tab key to flip around, remember that we disabled all the auto routing and auto patching so we're going to need to cable things up manually. So the first thing that we'll do is we will connect the two devices connection on the back of the combinator to audio input for channel 1 on the line mixer. Next what we'll do is we will connect the left out of the master on the line mixer to the shaper filter A audio input on the first maelstrom. We're going to take the right output and connect that to the shaper filter A input on the second maelstrom. We're then going to take the main output left filter A and connect it to the from devices left on the top of the combinator. 
By doing this, it automatically connected the right side of it too, but we don't want to have the right output out of the first maelstrom. We just want to have the left output. So we're going to take the left output out of the second maelstrom and connect that to the right connection on the from devices. So now we've done all the cabling. Everything is connected up exactly as we need it. So remember that we're controlling two maelstroms here. So in order to make this gel, we're going to actually need to set up some of the, uh, the real-time controls um, on the front panel of the combinator. So what we will do is we will expose the programmer and we'll first go to the left maelstrom and first things first we're going to disable the receive notes functionality for each of these maelstroms and what this is going to do is it's going to indicate to reason and record that this is in fact an effect patch rather than an instrument patch. Next what we're going to do is we're going to go to rotary 2 and we're going to assign rotary 2 to control shaper amount. Rotary 3 is going to control shaper mode so that we can switch between the different shaper types. And rotary 4 is going to control the master level. And I'm going to repeat this process for Maelstrom 2. So let's set rotary 2 to control shaper amount. Rotary 3 to control shaper mode. And rotary 4 to control master level. And I also want to assign button 1 to control the shaper on off. That way I can switch it on and off um, as need be. And I'm going to do this for both of them. And finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some controls on the line mixer. Um, you'll see that after messing with wave shapers for a little while that subtle changes in volume can create drastic changes in the actual shaper output. So what we're going to do on rotary 1 is we're going to set this to control channel level 1. And rather than have it bottom out at 0, I'm going to have it bottom out at 64. That way we're not completely cutting the sound out. And I'm going to set rotary 4 to control master level. I'm going to quickly rename each of these controls also. So I'm going to call this first one drive. I'm going to call the second one shaper AMT for amount. Third one I'm going to call shaper mode. Fourth one I'm going to call M level for master level. And the first button I'm going to rename shaper on off. And now I'm pretty much done with all of the setup that I need. I can actually save the patch and I'm going to call this CP Wave Shaper, and I am done. I have now saved the patch, and I can reuse it over and over again. So let's actually wipe this from the rack. And last time I showed you what the Wave Shaper does to a simple sound, so now we're actually going to switch that up, and I'm actually going to pull up a more complex sound. So I'm going to pull up an instance of Thor, and I'm going to pull up a patch that I have ready here. And this is a wavetable-based wobble sound. So to hear what this sounds like before we apply wave shaping. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up my wave shaper. I'm going to go to Create and go to the Create Effect function here. And I'm going to choose my wave shaper that I just created. And now, if I engage the wave shaper, I'm just going to bring my wave shaper amount down and bring my level amount up here. And let's start playing shaper amount. Just quickly A B this. So 
So as you can hear, it's a pretty dramatic effect and really animates the sounds. And like I said, Thor has a shaper in its signal path. So there's absolutely no reason why we can't gang shapers up on top of each other. So let's actually engage the shaper on Thor and let's choose through a different shaper algorithm. And there are different shaper algorithms inside Thor than what exists inside Maelstrom. So let's cycle through some of them and let's play with some of the, uh, the drive controls. <laughs> Pretty big difference. So, there you have it. Now you have your very own Wave Shaper effect patch. I hope that this has been helpful and that you've enjoyed it, and until next time, take care. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.